Hello and welcome to another exciting episode from Ken's training. Today's training is going to be on annual refrigerator maintenance. The steps that we are going to take are going to be uh, cleaning out the condenser coils. We'll use an air compressor for that. I have a small portable air compressor. Uh, we'll replace all the ice maker water filters if they have not been changed out within one year. So we'll check the data on those. By the way, the types of refrigerators we'll be working on will be uh, from standard residential refrigerators up to commercial um, kitchen equipment type of refrigerators. Uh, check the overall refrigerator operation, the doors, the lights, the gasketing around the doors. And um, this PM is a very dusty job, so this is being performed after hours. Uh, so that's, that's basically it. Let's get to it. All right, here's the storage room where there are three refrigerators. The first one here is a Trowelson refrigerator. It's fairly new, and it has a, a digital readout there, and it's pretty nice. The next one is a Jordan, no digital readout. And the last one is a Dell Field. It's got a digital re readout. Um, they all appear to be operating okay. Just opening up the door. This one here has a light and the temperature is good. There's no water buildup or anything like that that I can see. There's no water pooling underneath any of uh, these refrigerators, which is good. Open up the next one here and there's a light that's not working so I'm going to have to get an appliance light bulb and take that out. It looks like I just need a Phillips head uh, screwdriver just to remove a couple of screws there and there, replace that. There is a thermometer here and, oh, hold on, I'm trying to show you that temperature. It's, trying, it's getting out of focus. about 10 degrees. So it's a freezer, looks like it's doing fine. Uh, the last one is a refrigerator at 37 degrees. And opening the door, there is light. It is working. Kind of a funky shape if I did have to replace that light. Um, other than that, this refrigerator is looking good. I'm going to uh, now, the condensers on this one are located here at the top of the three, so I'll have to put my ladder, I've got a ladder here, and I'll have to put that climb up there, and then I'll show you just before I get ready to blow down. The setup that I have is, uh, I got a small air compressor right here, it's already uh, uh, got air inside of it, about 120 pounds. And then I'm just going to use a uh, uh, nozzle right here as for the uh, spray. Then for it, because I'm going to be using an air hose, uh, I'll put on some uh, safety uh, glasses here. Um, it's okay if you use goggles, but for now I'm just going to use uh, safety glasses. Hang on for now. Okay, this is what the top of the trousen looks like. That's the coil that I want to wash. Um, I want to blow out. There's an on off switch they have right here. I'm just going to shut off the refrigerator for now while I'm doing this. On the Jordan, there's the coil that I want to clean out right there. They do have an on off switch located right there, so I'm just going to shut it off. That'll cycle off for now. And then the next one further down is that uh, Dell field, but I'll let that sit for now. So I've got my uh, hose hooked up. And uh, I'll see you here. Yes. Yeah, I'm blow it out all the way. You might hear the compressor as I'm blowing this. You might hear the compressor start on because it's on autom automatic start with the pressure switch.
done basically the first two and um, uh, I'll just go ahead and turn these ones back on and get ready to do the next one. But basically that's all it takes to do on these uh, refrigerators for annual maintenance for this style refrigerator. Okay, I moved over to the to the Delfield refrigerator and while I was getting ready to do the coil I was looking for the on off switch which is right there. I also noticed that right there. That is an iced up line telling me that there's a probably a, a leak of refrigerant in this system and it's got a problem. So this refrigeration cycle does have a problem. There's a uh, data nameplate on the condenser right here. I read it. The refrigerant is R12. Um, so for me to go ahead and do service on this, I'd have to coordinate with the kitchen personnel to empty the refrigerator uh, so that uh, this could be serviced. It is on wheels and it could come out. For now, all I'm going to do is just uh, shut the switch off right there. Okay, I'm just shutting it off for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, blow down the uh, coil and just clean it out since I've got my air compressor here ready to go. That's one of the reasons why you want to do this job after hours. It is a totally dusty deal. Um, once I get done blowing this one out, I am going to go ahead and clean out this here. Vent. But uh, for now, I'm just going to blow this out a little bit better and then I'll clean out the exhaust vent. Alright, I just let the compressor cycle off. I just want to show you how dusty if the camera's picking all this up. Um, this is just all this dust that comes out as I kind of clean things off. I also cleaned off the, the vent that's built into the, to the door and you can see all the dust that's here on the ground uh, as well as uh, here um, and then over here as well so it's a strong reason why you want to do this job after hours so I cleaned off that particular vent for the exhaust there's a, a I guess I got another supply vent that just opened to the ceiling I cleaned that one out and uh, so basically that's it for now I just wanted to show you how uh, dusty everything gets in here there's the appliance bulb I pulled out of that one refrigerator. I just had to take this off with a uh, Phillips head screwdriver. And just in case I wanted to make sure that there was no problem with uh, anything else. So I opened up the door and I took my uh, bolt stick, turned it on right here, and just held it right there. You can see that that's lighting up. So all I have to do is put a good light bulb in there. Not, it can't just be any light bulb, it's got to be a special appliance light bulb. I don't have one right now, I'll have to get one at the Home Depot. So uh, that's it for now, I just wanted to show you that I'm ready to change that out. Alright, here's the next refrigerator that we're going to tackle. Um, yeah, there's the brand name of it right there, so it's a True. The um, condenser is located down here at the bottom. So right here, I gotta just remove this door, and there's just four screws, one, two, three, and four, um, that need to come off to gain access to the condenser. There's uh, just regular Phillips head screws right there. Okay, so that's easy enough. There's two lights. The lights are all working. There's one there at the top, there's one in the door right there and the operational seems to be fine, temperature is holding up good. Now this next refrigerator, Coca-Cola, actually, you know, Coca-Cola does own that. I'll see if I can gain access to the condenser quickly just to give the coils a blow off since I'm here with my equipment. The um, Pepsi machine uh, currently is uh, not in service, but the ice maker at the top is. So I'll uh, uh, look at the condenser coil there as well. Now the two next machines, Pepsi and Coke, both Pepsi and Coke own those, but they don't come in here and ever clean the coils or do annual service or anything. They just fix it or replace it if there was a problem. 
I'll see if the um, coils are easy to get to down here and blow them out while I'm at it. Alright, so this is where I'm at. I took the door off of the true. There's the door. There's the coil right there. You can see how dirty that is here in that picture. Have not washed it down yet. The tray was a little messed up. It was sitting kind of at an angle and I just had to lay it down flat. It's supposed to lay down flat. Um, that tray is there. The reason why that tray is there with that tube that you see right there. If any water builds up in the evaporator section, it drains down into here because it's warm circulated air from the condenser, it'll evaporate off into the atmosphere. Uh, as you can see, it's dry, so we don't have any issues, but that's supposed that pan is supposed to lay flat. Now, I had some, uh, because I'm getting ready to blow things out, uh, there was some stuff up here. I just moved that out of the way so I can clean everything off e easily afterwards. The Pepsi, uh, there's the cover for that right there. It was held on pretty easily. Just one Phillips head screw right about here. You just had to open the door. There's the screw. On uh, the Coke machine right there, there was uh, four quarter inch hex head screws located in the corners. One, two, three, and four comes off. The coils you can see are a little bit different. Instead of being a fin coil, it's more just like a a round coil and that's what the coil looks like on the Pepsi machine. Now on the ice maker. Alright here's the ice maker. Let me climb up there and show you what it is that I'm looking at. Now uh, let's see if I can show you this. On the back of this there is a filter that filter needs to be removed. Now there is a little tab right here. I'm going to take that tab. Let's see here if that will turn up. There it goes. There you go. I just turned that tab up right there. Let me zoom in. Now this is going to come out. And then this here is a filter. Okay, so now obviously I'm going to take this and I'm going to wash that thing out. It looks practically, I don't know, clogged pretty good. Um, also, I'm going to now see if I can show you the coil. Uh, so there's the coil right there. The camera is not quite picking it up, but there's the coil. I'll blow that out as best I can, as well as these louvers here and on the other side. Um, and that's it for now. One thing I want to point out, I grabbed my shop vac. You remember all that dust that was down here? I cleaned up all that dust and also inside of the room here and on the floor. We are in the service industry and ideally what you want to do is you want to leave the place cleaner than when you first uh, arrived. So that way when the tenant comes in on the next following business day, they don't see that anyone's left a mess behind. So always clean up after yourself. I just wanted to point that out. All right, before I start blowing down with my air compressor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, shop vac and I'm going to try to vacuum out some of the dust first. I do have, let me show you real quick, I do have a pleated filter on there to collect the dust. So it's not like you want to uh, not have a uh, pleated filter on there. You want to leave that on. So what I'm going to do is I just turn that on and let me jump up here onto this coke machine. Instead of just blowing that out, what I'll do is I'll see if I can't vacuum that up and get it into the shop vac rather than all over the place. So I'll try to do this with as much of the coils as possible uh, before I uh, proceed forward with anything else. The, um, here. It's coming out pretty nicely. There. And I'll still have to blow out what I can't reach. Now on this one here, what I'll probably end up doing is just running that underneath the, um, the faucet and I'll rinse that out with water. Okay, here we are underneath the faucet. Blow some hot water. Now what I'm going to do is I'll blow it out backwards. 
And let's see if that's doing anything. That's helping. Once I do that and get this whole side done, then I'll just go back on the following side and rinse it that way as well just to get it good. That's cleaning up pretty nicely. You can see that. That's the difference between washing it down and not washing it down yet. So I'll go ahead and finish this job off camera. All right, here's the final product on how clean that came out. That came out pretty good. I mean, you could hardly see through it before. Now you can see my hand back there and everything. So, anyways, I just wanted to show you what that looked like. I was vacuuming out this coil, and I, before I did the whole coil, I wanted to show you how much you can get with just the vacuum. So I'm gonna turn the vacuum on. You can see, and just using the vacuum gets an awful lot. So there, that shows you how much I got with just doing it with that. Now I'm going to pan back and just use the compressed air. Let's just see how much I missed with just using the vacuum. Uh, give me a second to hook up the compressed air. All right, here we are with compressed air. Let's see how much we missed, if anything. shut that compressor off for a second. All right, you know what? I think I got about 95% with just the vacuum. So that's great. If you don't have compressed air and all you have is a um, shop vac, like this one right here, then you can do a real fine job just in and of itself. But with the combination of the two, with having an air compressor that I have right there, and also the shop vac, the combination really gives you nice uh, superior results. So that's it for now. I'm going to continue uh, to go ahead and vacuum out the rest of these coils here and here and then blow everything out and get everything clean. Okay, here's everything after I've blown it out. You can see the true coil is nice and clean and I've also uh, cleaned out both the Pepsi and Coke machines uh, coils. Those are all fine. Uh, I also uh, cleaned out on the ice machine up at top here, the Manitok, cleaned out the, the left side and the right side which were the louvers and then I also cleaned the coil in the back and then now I've also put back the uh, pre-screen, pre-filter, metal pre-filter, I also that, that I washed out, that's back in place. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put the covers back on and then these uh, four units will be completed. I almost forgot to mention on the cover doors also I'll vacuum those out and blow them out with compressed air before I put them back on so there's one there for the true and there's one there for the Pepsi machine and one for the coke machine so I'll do that to all three and then put those back on all right all the panel doors are back on everything's buttoned up I blew everything off I blew off all the uh, countertops but even after blowing off all of the countertops the um, it's still dusty so I have gotta use the spray cleaner and it's kinda greasy too so I have a, uh, a foaming uh, citrus degreaser type product that I'm gonna use um, but that, that's what you need to do and then wipe that down to get that clean 
Okay, now I got a water filter that I want to change out for the ice machine, which is right there. There's the water filter. It's an EverPure i2000 water filter. And I got the brand new filter right there on the countertop. So what I'm going to do, first thing I have to do is I got to take this valve up here and turn that off like this. Now I gotta bleed the pressure out of the line so that I can twist this item off. That copper tubing, I'm gonna follow it in the back of the ice machine, break it, and then see if I can't uh, uh, bleed the pressure off that way. Okay, I took the door off of the ice machine. There's an easier way than trying to break the line in back. What I did was, is I took this switch right there and changed the position to, uh, from ice to clean. You see the red toggle switch, I'll point it out to you, uh, right here. And I just changed that over to clean. And then while the machine was filling with uh, water, then I just went ahead and just uh, uh, turned off this uh, valve right here so I know that it's completely off. Now that that's off, uh, what I should be able to do is I should be able to just simply unscrew that because the pressure is gone out of the line. See that one? Pull that out. Okay. There we go, right there. I just got a little bucket under here to try to capture some of that. And for this, I'll just put this in here for now. The old one. On the new one, Okay, here's my new one ready to go. What you do is you push that in, turn it all the way to the right until it stops rotating. Turn that handle on. And what you want to do is you now want to flush that out for five minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that switch in the clean position and I'm going to completely flush out all of that and it'll just uh, go down the drain. I'll let this harvest all brand new ice. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, let that coil, uh, let that water filter rather, just uh, flush out for the next five minutes and then uh, completely uh, empty out that ice bin so it harvests all brand new ice. Uh, another thing that I'm going to do that you should always make a good practice of is you should put the date uh, with a black sharpie right on the, uh, on the filter. So today's date is January 20th, 2014. What I'll do is I'll just make sure this is nice and dry and then just write down 12014. That way, you know exactly what date you installed the filter, and you should make a habit of that on any water filter that you touch. All right, so I just want to show you that step. All right, we still got four more refrigerators to go in this kitchen. There's one right here. Over here, there is one. Another one here, and then over here, there's a double. That's Actually, that's four, and then there's one more, there's five. There's the last one right here. The, um, for the operational check, it's pretty much just uh, making sure that they're it's putting out the right amount of temperature. And it is nice and cold. There's no condensate buildup for the condenser to clean the coils there's a plate back here that's going to have to come off and that'll be the next step is removing this plate here and gaining access to that now for the other refrigerators I'll have to uh, possibly pull them out off to move this black matting and pull and pull this out there's a shelf here that will have to come off in order to uh, gain access to see what's going on 
Okay, I got four of them ready to wash down. This one I'll have to wait till the end because uh, I got to do these four first. So I pulled it out from the wall, this one. I got everything that I work on, I want to unplug it while I'm working on it. I don't want it plugged in. Now, let me show you this. Uh, so I pulled the back uh, door off there, three Phillips head screws. Now I'm going to try to show you the coil. And there it is with the flashlight so you can see it. That's pretty, pretty nasty. I'm going to try to vacuum everything up before I blow it down. So that's the first one. Let me show you the next one. Okay, here's the, the next one here. And there is that coil there. And there is everything else. And all right, here is the next one. You can see how nasty that is. Really caked on. There's that coil right there. And now, see I've got that unplugged right there. This one here, I didn't have to pull that off because the coil was actually exposed right here. So I'm going to see if I can't get it going through here and going in through right here as well. But there's the uh, coil and that there's what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and start vacuuming and uh, blow everything out. Okay, I've blown out, cleaned all the coils. Here's the first one I'm going to show you. And hopefully you can see that. Cleaned up fairly nicely. Okay, so that's the first one. I gotta put the door back on, plug that one back in. You can see the debris here on the ground. Okay, coming over to the second one. And there it is right there. There's that coil. Cleaned up fairly nicely. And the rest of the condenser. Put that door back on. Now this one here, if you recall, was really caked up. That cleaned up very nicely as well, as well as this one right here. So I just wanted to show you both of those. And the last one, here it is. Step down here. Okay, there it is right there. And uh, should have much better air flows now. All right, I'm just gonna start buttoning these up. I got one more to go. Here's the last one I got pulled out. In order to do it, first I take this one and move it out this way because it has a shelf on it. Then I pull this one out. I unplugged it from the wall right there, so there's the plug. Here is the coil. Uh, let's see here. Not too bad, I guess. Try to zoom in on that for you. But there it is. It's actually not too bad. And I'll just go ahead and blow everything out here, try to clean it as best as possible, vacuuming, and then blow it out. Okay, that's it. Okay, here we are, we're all done. The uh, water filter, I've been checking on it lately. This is the brand new water filter, it is not leaking. So everything looks good, you can see underneath it there, that there's no water leak. Uh, I've got a new date on it there, I put it on the front. January 24, 2014. Uh, one job that the one thing that made this job really slow was that water filter. To make it faster to drain it for five minutes, what I can do is this is the discharge line of that filter. As I could put I could put a T into that, put a three eighths inch valve, and then run a line down the side of this and and drop right here into this tray, and then I can purge it out for five minutes without. Uh, going through the trouble of going through the ice machine, which is what I did this cycle as that really slowed me down Anyways, that's all set. It's not leaking. The refrigerators here are buttoned up uh, Coming over here to the other side all the refrigerators are put back to the original location the mats are put back all the refrigerators are plugged in and working properly and Everything is I cleaned up everything with the vacuum cleaner to make sure that everything was uh, back to normal. This one here has got 35. 
on the refrigerator and two degrees on the freezer. Um, this is what the inside of these ones here look like. Uh, there is no lamp on these. And that's basically it. So that's it for, for the commercial refrigerators. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you could, um, if you could do me two things. If you liked the video, if you could please hit the like button uh, down below at the bottom uh, of the uh, the video on the left hand side. Um, uh, I like to. Uh, that would be nice. And also the second item, if you could leave a comment. Uh, I love to read the comments uh, that people leave behind, whether they like the video or didn't like the video or if they need some help or anything like that. Uh, the videos that I create are generally created for the uh, people who work in commercial office buildings in the maintenance department, people that specialize in mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, although we do touch other things like roofing and other trades, uh, uh, drywall painting and so forth. But um, if you have any questions or anything like that, I also would like to share with you my uh, website that I have, which is at kencogliano at wix.com forward slash Ken Training. I am going to provide a link uh, at the end of this vid at this segment, so this way if you uh, want to click on that, you can go directly to my website. You can also um, check out all my videos there as well as uh, there's a section that you can send me a personal email if you wanted to uh, discuss something that you're working on or anything like that. Uh, thanks again and I hope you uh, have enjoyed the video that you were watching.